Okay, MPs have been voting tonight on legislation that would create a smoke-free generation, major public health intervention. In the last hour, the tobacco and vapes bill passed on a free vote. The eyes to the right, 383. The nose to the left, 67. Yeah, that's a majority of 316 to give the bill a second reading. The size of that support suggests it will be supported by all sides. And when it becomes law, then young people born since 2009 will be banned from ever buying a cigarette. But some Tory MPs have described the plans as profoundly unconservative. In fact, Boris Johnson branded the bill nuts. Uh, this was the Health and Social Care Minister Victoria Atkins opening the debate this afternoon. There is no liberty in addiction... Nicotine robs people of their freedom to choose. The vast majority of smokers start when they are young, and three-quarters say that if they could turn back the clock, they would not have started. Labour's shadow health minister, Wes Streeting, echoed that sentiment. This is a lethal addiction, a scourge on society, an enormous burden on our NHS, a drag on our economy, and it is time to consign it to the dustbins of history. But among the critics of the bill was the former Prime Minister, Liz Truss. The instinct of this establishment, and which is reflected by a cross-party consensus today in today's chamber, is to believe that they, that the government, are better at making decisions for people than people themselves. So, nuts or sensible intervention? With us to discuss is Dr Rob Branston, Associate Professor at the University of Bath. He's also a member of the Tobacco Control Research Group. Thank you for being with us this evening. Um, not a single person, Liz Truss says, has raised this issue on the doorstep. Is she right? I find that very hard to believe. Surveys suggest that the vast majority of the public actually support this. Uh, proposed legislation. So I find it very difficult to believe no one has suggested this is a good idea to Liz Truss. There will, though, be a, a whole new enforcement challenge for the police. It puts new onus on shopkeepers. Why is this a better way forward than a public education programme and higher taxes for those who do smoke? Well, I think you've touched upon much of the, the rationale already, and that is simply the very addictive and lethal nature of tobacco products. Something like two out of three people who uh, try a single cigarette will go on to be addicted, uh, and that means smoking daily. And we know there are various chemicals added to tobacco products to increase their addictive nature. So tobacco is a product that is unique in that regard, and it is also incredibly bad for people who smoke. So I think tobacco is an incredibly uh, important case where we need to take the measures to uh, encourage individuals to take sensible decisions. Uh, and in terms of enforcement, what, what I would say is the industry made a very big deal about things like the smoking ban and said it would, could never be enforced and people wouldn't follow suit. But actually, we saw the vast majority of people, something like 98 uh, percent of those uh, measures were enforced within eight months of the no smoking law. So uh, I think fears of uh, you know, uh, a big uh, lack of compliance are hugely overplayed here. What about risk? the risk of pushing smoking into the shadows? Is there a, is there a danger that you make smoking cooler um, or that you create a black market? Well, I think the, the, the detail is really important here. So this law, if it you know, becomes law, is not about banning smoking per se. Millions of people currently smoke in the UK and will continue to smoke. Uh, the day after this law is passed. The point is it is simply about stopping more people starting so that smoking over time fades away. And once again, the industry is very quick to make the argument that rules of this type will create a black market. But actually, we saw no increase in the illicit market for tobacco products when the age of smoking increased from 16 to 18 back in 2007. But we did see a move towards vaping, and, and now we have a problem with underage people turning to vapes. Well, indeed, but this is why we are dealing with the tobacco and vapes bill, because part of the, the law being debated is to increase the regulation of vaping products to make sure young people don't start uh, vaping when they haven't previously been smokers. So this, I think, is a win-win policy because it looks to address tobacco use in cigarettes, which are incredibly damaging, 
but it also looks to protect young people from the current trend of using uh, vaping products, which are not risk free and hence should only be used by those who are looking to quit smoking. Mm. Britain is the first. Of course, the New Zealand government stepped back from a, a similar bill. But when you look at the size of the, the majority tonight, it is it, it's significant. Would that suggest to you that a government of any colour would, would opt to, to follow the same path and, and not reverse it? Well, I, I, I can't speak to the political situation in the future and what may or may not happen. But certainly this is a policy that has widespread public support uh, which is supported by pretty much all public health professionals, which is based on the science of tobacco interventions and what is likely to work. Uh, so I personally predict that if the UK passes these rules, we'll actually be the first country, uh, but many others will soon follow suit because it is such an effective uh, policy intervention, uh, it, certainly in terms of the modelling that has been done. So I, I welcome the, uh, the strong majority for the bill today, uh, and I hope that continues into the future. Dr. Rob Branson, good to talk to you tonight. Thank you. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News.